So the topic today is absolute values and then we're going to look at an application of absolute values involving error. So you might have seen these before, you might not have, to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, an absolute value of a number is the number without any negative signs attached to it. It gets rid of negative signs. So our notation, if we want to take the absolute value of a number, is that we put the number between these vertical line segments. And it gets rid, as I say, of any negative sign. And because that's all it does, it doesn't do anything at all to positive numbers. Like the absolute value of positive 2 is still just 2. There's no negative sign to get rid of. And where the absolute value is often useful is, um, this isn't quite the application we'll be looking at, but it's often useful when you want to um, sort of talk about the size of negative and positive numbers together. Like, if you look at negative 10,000 versus 2. 2 is the bigger number here because any positive number is bigger than any negative number. But there are situations where we want to say, okay, but, but if you ignore, I mean, 10,000 is bigger than 2. So the absolute value that just get rid of negative signs and just look at, in this case, 10,000 versus 2 and talk about what's bigger and what's smaller in that context. So that's one way that it's useful. We today are going to talk about the absolute value in terms of distance. That's going to lead us into this application. So I skipped it because I don't think it's very interesting. We didn't do the distance formula on the plane, but at some point we've seen distance on a number line. Like if we are looking at a number line and we want to look at the number 4 and we want to look at the number negative 2. And we ask, well, how far are these numbers from each other? And we can count one, two, three, four, five. Well, there are six units apart on the number line. And the formula here is that the distance between numbers on the number line is the bigger number minus the smaller number. 4 minus negative 2, two negative signs next to each other, 
cancel out. 4 minus negative 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6, which is precisely what we got when we just went to the number line and counted those intervals. Where this formed the bigger minus smaller is going to run into issue is if you have a variable x. What is the distance <coughs> between x and 3? on the number line. Well, as I say, we're going to run into an issue here because x is a variable and x could take on any number as its value. And according to what we have on the last frame, The distance should be the bigger number minus the smaller number, but x could be bigger than 3. Or x could be less than 3. Because x is a variable that could be bigger or less than 3, this bigger minus smaller formulation isn't going to work for us. Absolute values offer the solution to this. The distance between two numbers and y on the number line is the absolute value of one of those numbers minus the other numbers. And absolute values are special because when you subtract inside an absolute value, order doesn't matter. Um, the abs, let me, let me do that real quick. The absolute value of five minus three is the absolute value of two, which is positive two. The absolute value of three minus five is the absolute value of negative 2, which is also positive 2. And this form of the works. I mean, we can see it if we look at any example. Like, let's look at the distance between 1 and 5 on the number line. And going into this, we, we can figure out what the answer is. 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So according to what I just said, the distance between 5 and 1 on the number line can be gotten by taking the absolute value of their difference. And in this case, the absolute value of 4 is 4. So yeah, that, that's what we were expecting. But again, the beauty of this form to the is that it works whether you have the larger number minus the smaller number or 
the smaller number minus the larger number. So this is our solution to the problem we identified here. The distance between x and 3 <coughs> is the absolute value of x minus 3, which is also the absolute value of 3 minus x. And my promise was that I was going to show you some kind of application of this. And the classic application of absolute value is error. Like especially if you're in any of the sciences and you read papers where scientists are recording measurements, you're going to see absolute values a lot. And that's because saying that, saying that there is a small error can be thought of as saying that two numbers are close to each other on the number line. Let's give an example of what I mean by that. Weather forecasting. So it's uh, been blessedly cool today for the first day since the semester started, really. <clears throat> but Thursday of this week, last I checked, they were predicting a high temperature of about 80 degrees. Now, there's going to be some error, or I mean, errors may be a kind of a perjurative way of putting this. The weather forecast isn't going to be exactly correct. I mean, if they say it's a high of 80, but actually it's a high of 82, nobody is going to be surprised by that. It's just something that happens. They're trying to predict the future. There are limits to how accurate they can be. On the other hand, if they say it's a high of 80 and it's a high of 110, then maybe we have some room to say, well, that this weather forecast didn't do its job. It was just totally inaccurate. Or if they say a high of 80 and it's a high of 60, for example. So let's say the weather forecast is usually to within five degrees. So if there were a high of 75 or a high of 85, that would be within the kind of accepted parameters of a weather forecast. No use getting upset over something like that. And now let's try to take this and in particular let's try to take this 80 and this 5 and let's try to write this as a mathematical expression. 
And what we're going to do here is we'll let x be the actual temperature on Thursday. We've got our number line and we've got our prediction, which is 80 degrees. <clears throat> and then we've got the actual temperature X. And maybe the actual temperature will be hotter than 80 degrees. Or maybe the actual temperature will be less than 80 degrees. We don't know. But what we do know is that x should be relatively close to 80. x shouldn't be 50. x shouldn't be 100. x is the actual temperature. The actual temperature should be pretty close to the prediction. How close to the prediction? Well, that close to the prediction. The distance on the number line between x, the actual temperature, and 80, the predicted temperature, should be less than 5. And that can be expressed as an inequality involving absolute values. Inequalities like this, I've said it before and now I'm repeating myself, but they show up a lot in scientific literature. They show up a lot in um, political polls and stuff. So um, it's a pretty, pretty real application. I mean, I know sometimes in these classes we're doing word problems, and it's okay. But but this is a just a fake problem you made up for the class. Um, this is a pretty uh, genuine thing that you do see in a lot of real world settings. Um, I mentioned political polls. Let's do <coughs> maybe another example. So, I don't remember the exact number, except that it's more than half. But let's say that 65% of Americans support The strike that's going on now. Um, there's there's a Holly, strike in Hollywood having to do with stuff like um, using AI to write scripts, using AI to sort of replicate voice actors' voices without paying them, stuff like that. It's a huge mess. So there's this big strike. Um, last I saw, over half of Americans were supporting it. Um, but if, if you see a headline like that, I mean, that 65 is just an approximation. It's not like we can ask every American individually what they think of this strike. 
so you do a telephone poll, or you do whatever, you survey campuses because it's easy to get students to answer questionnaires, and you do all of that, and at the end of the day, you have this 65%. But you understand that it's just a number. So if the if the periodical reporting this data is responsible, which unfortunately is not always the case, they'll try to talk about the margin of error. They'll say, well, we did these uh, surveys, we got 65%, here's how accurate we think our survey was. And there are very standard statistical tools that people can use to try to get try to get at that. Maybe we have an eight percent margin of error here. So maybe seven as high as seventy three percent as low as 57%. Again, let x be the actual <coughs> percentage that support the strike. Well, going back to the number line, we've got the number line. Here's the number we have. We think around 65. And there's the real value at and maybe x is bigger than 65, maybe x is less than 65, we don't know. But we think the distance between x and 65 should be less than 8. So the distance between x and 65 is the absolute value of x minus 65. We think that value is less than 8. Um, it would also be correct to say this. I mean, I've, I've told you that when you're subtracting in the absolute value, the order doesn't matter. Having said that, I mean, tomorrow we're going to learn how to solve these inequalities, and it will be a lot more convenient to have the x first if we're trying to actually solve the thing. So let's, uh, let's have this as our convention. Um, another example, I mean, it's a, it's a brief class work, so we can do three examples, something like the weight of a package. You buy an eight ounce bag of candy. Now, it's always possible that you take that eight ounce bag of candy and you put it on a scale and you do not see exactly eight ounces. I mean, maybe you see 7.9 ounces or 8.9 two ounces. So once again, that eight is 
an approximation saying there should be about eight ounces in this bag. Let's, I don't actually, at one point I looked it up. I no longer remember. There's a pretty should be a kind of strict margin of error here. I mean, if you're advertising eight ounce bags and you're consistently selling seven ounce bags instead, you're going to get in trouble with somebody. So let's say that we want, and similarly, I mean, if we're seven eight ounce bags and they actually weigh nine ounces we're not going to get in legal trouble but we are just giving stuff away for free which has its own problems so let's say we want to be within 0.1 ounce of eight ounces Will that X be the actual weight? So you don't have to draw the number line every time if you don't want to. I just figure it might be helpful since we're seeing this for the first time. So there's our number line. There's what we ideally want, eight ounces. And then we've got our actual weight x. Maybe it's less than eight. Maybe it's bigger than eight. But whether it's less than eight or bigger than eight, we want the distance between x and 8 to be less than 0.1. That's sort of this uh, formula, really. The absolute value of x minus our target. So here, our target is 8 is less than the margin of error. In fact, why don't I, well, so this is um, a little, well, no. Let, let's end that sentence there. It wasn't going anywhere useful. All three of these examples are basically the same. We have some approximate value, we have some actual value, and then we have some number telling us how good our approximation is how close the approximate and the actual value are. It's what we had here, it's what we had here, it's what we had here. So if we wanted to write this kind of as a general statement, can be the real value, the real temperature, the real percentage, the real uh, weight. The absolute value of x minus whatever approximation we have is less then our margin of 
error. So, you know, are there any questions about setting these inequalities up? The obvious next thing to do would be to say, okay, here's how you solve an equality involving absolute values. For various reasons, that's a topic that tends to stymie students a little, so I want it to be its own class rather than sort of 10 minutes at the end of this lecture. So I've broken the absolute value on